They never pay homage to me and what I've contributed because I'm not litty. I'm not cool enough. Okay, we'll see who the f is cool by the end of all this. We'll see who the f is cool out here, bro. I'm going to corner every f***ing body. Every f***ing body, bro. Especially the rappers that don't buy jewelry from me. <laughs> And if it wasn't for Little Uzi Vert. One of the greatest gifts I've ever received. That for certain is not a natural pink diamond. Bro, is this lady with the cash? Oh, Hi, I'm Ben. <laughs> Alright, congratulations, bro. You're the winner. Right up, right up, right up. Say, what the fuck is that? And then you would walk. A natural VSF, dance like Michael Jackson. I also did the no jumper interviews. I don't give a f about Scott Disick or 6ix9ine or any other celebrity cocksucker for that matter. Right. Not a CBD, bro. They have CBD. It's <laughs> like I started in San Francisco. I'm like a goldfish out here, bro. I don't even know what the f happened two minutes ago. It's the snatch game, stash game, all right? If you find me in the next 24 hours, you're going to get cash and this crown pendant. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> I want to build a business, make money, and get to the American dream in this country. And you don't judge me by the color of my skin or the length of my nose or whatever the f*** you're looking at. You know what I'm saying? There's a human being here that's thinking very carefully about every f***ing thing around himself. That's me. That's what the jewelry business is all about, sourcing materials, production. There's so many tire kickers and low lives in this business and in this world. That's really what this show is about. If I could pull this business off or not. And you're gonna see how I do it if I do. I hide nothing. I don't need to hide anything. I know how to use the truth as a weapon. This is not the reality that's scripted reality. This is indeed reality. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> As soon as I get back, I'm selling AP, Rolexes, and shit. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm we were, like, no, sell it, sell it, sell it. We were about to blow up before he made his little disappearance, you know what I'm saying? We were doing the shmoney. The shmoney, track money, remember? <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you. I really want to tell that it's like a glory and pack. Well, he listen. met me through my best and my worst times. I've, I've met him, I knew him for a while, you know what I'm saying? Like he was a friend of my barber. And he opened up a barber shop years ago. Years ago. And like I never even spoke to him because he would come in, he would just walk in, say, yell some shit in the middle of the shop. Bruh, 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 you know what I'm saying? And then walk away and like, you know, say, what the fuck is that? And then you would walk. And you disappear, and I like I didn't, and I was you know like a timid young dude. I didn't even know what the f he was even doing. The night went on, and he had one barber shop, then another barber shop, then he had a barber shop where there was a guy who was a legit crackhead, and then he he would crawl out of this hole in a wall to, to, no, 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 to, 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 to clean the offices. He'd crawl through a hole in the wall, and he's like, I just want to get my lungs dirty. I just want to get my lungs dirty. And he was, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he was paying him. There was a whole different scene. There was a little fish in a fish tank with breadcrumbs swimming, trying to survive. I had to change the water on that. And that went on for years and years. And then I started hanging out with my friend who was the barber, and, you know, he would be coming in with all sorts of shorties and thotties and... Like shit that I can't even say on camera was, you know what I'm saying, going down. All sorts of wild shit. Craziness. But the one time I really like got to know him, I got to know Peter, was when I was buying, I needed like a quarter ounce of weed or some shit for myself. It's the famous story. And for, and for like about an hour and a half, every 10 minutes, he would tell me he was 10 minutes away. <laughs> So said, where are you at? Five more minutes. Yes. I'm right there. I'll be right there. So I'm waiting. I'm like, I'm waiting for this dickhead. I'm waiting for this guy for like a, a, a quarter ounce for like $140 or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, and then, you know what I'm saying? He finally shows up. It was laughs. He was living a crazy lifestyle. Then I gave him, you know, then I gave him a job years later. You know, I took him to a baseball game and he started... You know, after he got arrested mad times and he started yelling at the baseball players. 
Flores was the name Flores, of the guy. Flores, like flowers. Yeah, he started. Yeah. He was asking, yo, you my pop. <laughs> <laughs> but I was hanging out with these guys and like you can't even tell the stories. You know what I'm saying? Even remotely. But there's one story that they told me they were partying in this basement or whatever. And they caught this mouse in the trash can. <laughs> Jerry. Tom and, and Jerry. And they, the way they told the story was hilarious. You know what I'm saying? Like, they tried to kill the mouse by pouring water and he was swimming. He survived. <laughs> and then they were like breaking up Dutch's and the mouse was like trying to swim. Swim around and like trying to rest up on the Dutch. And they kept doing, kept dumping shit and like the hours, wee hours in the morning, the mouse is surviving, they come back to the trash, yell at it, you know? Let shit me tell like you, that. I met a girl and I took over the house for one day and even she goes, is that Jerry? And they're like, how this bitch told about this? It was just, it's just the way, the way they told the story of the Jerry, of this, of this mouse struggling in this trash can filled with water, it was just so funny to me and I never forgot it. <laughs> yeah. Welcome back to Trash Guys, Kirby and Isabella here. Check out this beautiful custom made necklace just coming out. Any mod you make, you're destroying, you're gonna be destroying something, right? Now mods could be either better, I'm a car guy, so I'm gonna explain it in like car terms, you know? I buy a car from the dealership, you get a stock. If I add mods, all of a sudden it's custom, it's gonna drop value instantly. Like I'm gonna lose like half the value on my car, right? But if I put in a those mods on the car, let's say a turbo or a cold air intake or whatever, a new X-Pipe or whatever, whatever I gotta do to my car, for me, my, it's, it's gonna make my car go a little bit faster. It's gonna have a little bit of horsepower or whatever I need it to do that I, that I want it to do, right? So the value that it's giving me, I'm putting in. If I were to resell it to somebody, to the dealership, whatever, they're gonna be half the value. That's the thing, you know, similar to watches, where yeah, you're destroying the value uh, of the watch by adding diamonds, but that's because you're, you're looking in an environment of people that are looking for plain Jane watches. Now, if I sell it to somebody who's looking for a diamond watch, I'm gonna get my money back out of it, right? You can let us do it. People that are skilled enough to actually like, put the diamonds in. Yeah, you're drilling holes into it. Of course, you're, you're beating up the watch. But if you see the value of adding those diamonds in, then that's, and that's what you want for your image, for your brand, for your rep, then that's what you do. You're, gonna, you're paying for that value. It's where you really that person sees a value in it. Pumza got me something that he thought reminded him of me. This, he shouldn't have got me anything, and I don't really like getting gifts because then I feel like a dickhead. Uh oh, shmoop -de -dee -poop -de -dee -dee. Shmoop. I, I saw it inside the store, I was like, this is Max. Totally, 100%. I was like, he needs to have this. Shmoop -de -dee -dee -poop -de -dee -dee. <laughs> this is the greatest, one of the greatest gifts I've ever received. I'm glad you like it. From one of the greatest people. I appreciate Pumza. it. I appreciate it. Shmoop -de -dee -poop. Yeah, right now money's getting tight around the world, bro. Money's getting tight around the world, and that's a big, big, big problem. Government's up, whatever it is. I've got these monster sized Cubans I'm gonna quit. I've got this uh, story for Lab, you know, for all the rappers out there that don't know what the f going on. I'm starting to really, you know what I'm saying? Rip motherfuckers, all right? So here's, here's the way the diamonds are supposed to work. You get a new wine in a new skin, all right? You know what that means? So that means if you take new wine, pour it in the old skin, you're gonna ruin, the, the skin is gonna burst, you're not gonna have the old wine, the old skin, and the new wine is all ruined, right? That's what can happen to diamonds if you're gonna start pouring new wine in the old skin. Now, what we, what we need to do is we need to put new wine in a new skin, and this is kind of uh, an example. So both could be preserved. What's at the top of the diamond spectrum here? Natural VSF 10 pointer plus, okay? These are bigger stones, natural VSF. Those are the most valuable stone, right? This is the value line right here. The, the higher, the more value, the, the higher the price, the higher the value, and the dancing. The higher, the more, the more dancing, right? You know what I'm saying? Natural VSF, dance like Michael Jackson. Okay? All right, that's what's going on over here. And indeed, everything all the way to from here on up dances about like Michael Jackson, Chris Brown, right here. 
okay and uh, but as far as price and value you can have diamonds dancing like Michael in lab 10 pointers VSF then you got on top of that you got minus 10 pointers natural okay they're still more expensive than lab and so on and so forth than naturals but they are uh, you know desirable stones this is what Ben Baller uses right here these types of stones but the lab in color are sometimes more expensive than even the natural let's remember okay this is where things get confusing because you got natural at the top and natural on top of lab but then you got a colored lab in between then you got colored natural which would be here but is not which is getting too, too confusing and the other important thing is you want to remember you want to get lab VS over natural SI because once you go into the SI world you're gonna start dancing like not like Michael do you want your diamonds to dance like I don't think you do and if it wasn't for little Uzi Vert oh shit oh little Uzi Vert so listen I don't want to bother little Uzi Vert he's done nothing to me other than you know I reviewed he's got a pink diamond here he's got a pink diamond here he's got a pink diamond there unfortunately that for certain is not a natural pink diamond and there's nothing wrong with that because as you can remember I did this for you little Uzi Vert I did this for you the lab colored are even worth more than some of the naturals in VS. It doesn't matter, lab or naturals, it's just matter what the value, what the price is, you know? I know you like shopping somewhere else. Well, you know, that's dangerous in today's jewelry environment. Doing business with anybody other than me is extremely dangerous. Because I'm uh, uh, on a tangent, you know what I'm saying? I did my dues. I uh, gave a lot of uh, valuable information that changed the course of history in the jewelry world. Uh, a lot of value, you know, people talking about appreciation, value, this, and else, and they never pay homage. They never pay homage to me and what I've contributed because I'm not litty. I'm not cool enough. Okay, we'll see who the f is cool by the end of all this. We'll see who the f is cool out here, bro. I'm going to corner every fing body. Every fing body, bro. Especially the rappers that don't buy jewelry from me. <laughs> So there's going to be a contest where I'm going to be uh, going live and the first person who can guess the weight of this chain it probably gets a thousand bucks or or a gift or whatever it is. So we're going to be going live. We're going to be setting that up. Yeah, let's talk Cali. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I mean that trip started fantastic. I started in San Francisco. You know, my memory, short-term memory is really bad nowadays. Any memory I have. I'm like a goldfish out here, bro. I don't even know what the f happened two minutes ago. So the name of the game is to do a little bit of business out here in California while I'm taking a break. So right now I'm in the middle, I'm in the middle of a snatch game. Where they're trying to snatch this. I set the prizes out here in the Northwest, Seattle. But um, unbeknownst to everybody out here who might be looking for me, I'm not gonna make this one easy. I'm gonna go hiking at the Cougar National uh, Mountain, whatever the park. And I'm gonna have this and I'll be there and then I'll come back and maybe tomorrow they can find me or whatever it is. But I'm not making this easy. This is a nice piece, a lot of money. It's the snatch game, stash game, all right? If you find me in the next 24 hours, you're going to get cash and this crown pendant, diamond gold crown pendant with this personal Franco chain of mine for free. All right, I'm also stashing cash all over the place, but you got to watch the rest of the video for the instructions so we can get busy out here. I'm really going to try to come back home to New York with this. New York, don't worry, you're going to get your own snatch game. But um, uh, if you could get me, you could get me in the next 24 hours. Other than that, I'm uh, 24 hours out. You can't come for me or else uh, you're going to get in trouble. And then you're going to be inside. City. I'm gonna, uh, you know, hide for a little while until the snatch game reaches a fever pitch. And I have no interest in giving up this crown pendant either. So there's the rock. It's that wet one right there. And this is where it's at uh, on a trail in Cougar National Park. 
by this uh, bridge right here. So it's very easy if you find that bridge. And I'll tell you the trail, I'll screenshot where it's at. So underneath this rock, right there, right by this post, easy breezy, it couldn't be easier. So the snatch game is still on. It's uh, loaded up this forest with some cash. Told people where to, to find it. Hopefully it helps them out. They could f***ing lose some calories while they're at it. Bro, 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 bro I've been looking for you everywhere in the city. Well, listen, I wish I, wish I could have got here, but this lady found me right here. So she wins the cash. I'll get you a consolation prize. This lady wins the cash. Okay, and the f***ing, uh, sorry to curse it. I was planning to be riding out until tomorrow, but it didn't work out. I'm sorry, bro. I've been looking everywhere. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. All right. Congratulations, bro. You're the winner. We, we got here together. I'm we, sorry, bro. It's okay. I catch you later, man. All right. Yeah. I, I got this from your store, too. If you could do me a favor, though, maybe you could give me a ride yeah, down to you. my I car, bro. Man, you're the king of the Northwest right here, bro. Oh. Say thanks to your mom to, okay. for taking you around. You. And a pleasure, and the winner, and everybody way. else that uh, came through. Yeah. Alright, <laughs> man. They stayed yeah. my chain, bro. Thank you, bro. So, most of the prizes have been found, from what I understand, except the one by the university. So, if you're looking for that, you still might find it. What, do you th what did you think of my uh, snatch game today? What? Okay. That was something else. <laughs> I know there's a lot of happy people out there. I was wishing I was out there because I was going to be out there trying to grab a few of them dollars that was under the rocks <laughs> and stuff like that. So I was, I was looking at the money, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's, it was good. It's good. I hope you guys enjoyed it, Max. Got some great things uh, that he's bringing to the table. He's always got some exciting things going on. So. We got the LA Diamond District over here. I shouldn't have been in here giving myself a hard time. We gotta get to the shop and handle my business and get the f out of here. So we're in the Diamond District, except in LA this time, and this gold wire is gonna get turned into gold chains. You wanna be able to take these links and turn them into gold chains properly. You need the proper system, the proper organization, the proper experience. And this is a classic Cuban. Dip it in the acid together. But you've got a lot of exotic links right here. This is something you see every day, this is something you don't. And this is how we manufacture chains on our website, tracksmyc.com. You can see the whole collection and the whole catalog of every possible chain that you can have handmade just for you. While the gold price is still what it is. I'm gonna show you some crazy gold links. Watch. Oh, here, over here. Yes. I'm waiting. Start a custom DM, no attracts, right? Know what you do. I'm here. Hold Sean. On. Sean? Yeah. What about it? Uh, we have yeah. to go check a store on there. The logo Paul piece. This is right here. You know, I didn't like how it was slanted. He made it slanted, so I told the designer, let's make it even, let's make it flat. We're gonna make another row of diamonds, something like that. And we'll add like K size logo, tracks logo. And then um, we even add the Logan Paul Maverick logo. Some ideas, maybe we'll do like the prime bottles in the back. We should be ready tomorrow to see what it's gonna look like. I know him since he was five. I was like, how old I was? Nine? No, wait. How, how old? 
I turned 34 now in October. So that means uh, I was I was like 12. No, what do you mean? I never I never smoked, never no weed, no none of that shit, no drugs. I drink very rarely, very rarely, and it's like a little bit. When I was 21, all the way to like 24, I think, or 25, I did drink a lot. Like I was heavy drinker back then. But wait, I respect work though. At that, uh, I didn't drink during the week. Even Mitch, my old boss, he used to like um, offer me drinks and shit. And I and, and I I said no because like, I respect work. Uh, I had this like itch. Like, at Friday, I went to drink with the with the guys, the whole group on the block. And you know, it's a big group, big group. Back then, we had a little group called Local Boys. I think it was. I forgot. Yeah, got a gang, man. But it wasn't a gang, gang though. Nah, it was a party. A gang, it was a party, party thing. It was like we used to go to house parties and stuff like that. Like, nah, nah. it wasn't like that though. Clean. I just got this cool backpack, man. And it's filled with goodies. Let's take a look. Dun, dun, dun. All I gotta do is pop this latch. Pop that latch. Whoa. What is all this? Top shelf, man. Indoor smalls. Wow. So that's pretty dope. And it's courtesy of my man, the Cali Way. So I got to see Ben Baller's jewelry operation, not where he did the production, but where he, uh, you know, did the sales. And I got to meet his jewelers, and uh, you know what I'm saying, they had a fantastic time. Further developed their business relationship, and you know the strategy is. I mean, you got West Coast, East Coast. He's legendary on that end. Thank you. He's legendary on that end. Um, uh, you know, they had a legendary uh, jewelry career. Let's take this ride to see Ben. Yep, so I like to keep this hat on to keep my hair nice and flat. Otherwise, the convertible drop top is gonna go. You know. If I was Ben Baller, where would I be? Maybe, let's go this way, see what happens. Some Yeezys, These collectible joints right here. The gold ones with the solid gold frame. This is a f***ing, the classic. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Holy what is, what is this right here? Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> famous, dude. <laughs> the whole shit, dude. 15 years ago, I made that, bro. That was like, that literally put me on the map. Like, yeah, the views, I guess, the, the, the 323 is for, yeah, that's Los Angeles. 3.23 3. 3 carat stone. Is that the area code right here or something? Yeah, 323 is the area code. Oh, that's for the, 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 not a CBD, bro. They have CBD. <laughs> no, I got to his, somehow I got to his level where, you know, we get to be friends and we get to do business. And, um, you know, he's a very strategic guy. Very strategic guy. And he sees what I'm doing. I see what he's doing or whatever it is. I mean, he's already, you know, 50 years old and he, uh, he's, he's golfing and he's already moving on into, he's like a Korean OG at this point in time. That's the way he walks around his shop. Very, very sharp. <laughs> uh, like, the, like the dinosaurs, you know, they're extinct. You're not, you're not gonna get a piece like this anywhere else at this point in time. So this is from the showcase out here on the West Coast, where I rarely am at. It's actually in the you know, it's in like museums, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do it for my, here. Hi, I'm Ben. 
<laughs> this is not your practice life, this is your real life. So don't f it up with SI. Do I go back here? Yeah. 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 Yeah, if you put the scenes right here, okay? Yeah. These are great to... <laughs> my factory's downtown, you know what I mean? This is just fucking... Well, this is a dope back, back room, man. Everything here is, for my curiosity, is fucking crazy, bro. Now this... Dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna spare this poor bastard. This time. Thief caught. Oh, it's bent that way? It's not this way. Yeah. Nothing I hate more than a thief. So this guy... How did you get his ID? You chased them down? That's gangster. Well, this used to be my office. It was like really nice back here. Right. But it's not as like crazy anymore. Right. You got some stuff back here down here. Look at this. A bunch of watches. Why aren't these on display, bro? Uh, some of the stuff's just like on the back, whatever. Like we don't really sell, you know, we don't like we, we, that's all factory, by the way. Like these, that's a factory president. That's yeah. not, okay. that's a factory baguette president. That, just that bezel alone, if you want to try to order it now, it's gonna be 85,000 just for the bezel. It's all factory diamonds. Well, what? So you, you don't want to put it on a display? I mean, I bought this watch at retail, you know what I mean? And now it's like, you know, high six figures, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's, it's collecting dust back here. Yeah, it is. Okay. Just, yeah. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> well, he runs a small light operation that charges, uh, you know, good margins on high quality jewelry for his brand. And he calls it, uh, calls it a day. Uh, you know, it's a nice, tight, small operation. It's not this f***ing fun house over here. Jesus! Cut it! These are pillars. There's pillars on the sixth, a fifth floor garage, right. parking garage. There's pillars in the garage right. holding this up. Holy shit. That's how heavy they are. That's sick. And if you go to my factory where I keep you know, all my shit at, my factory has four more of these. They you know it's just fucking nuts. This used to be my office, but I'm just, you know, being nice. That's where you get product, bro. <laughs> no man, bro. You gotta, you gotta get it, bro. <laughs> okay, you know the deal. So this is how a jewelry operation is ran back here on the west coast. Very interesting stuff. My Ben Baller IF and Co adventure has come to a complete and uh, I learned a little bit about this business. I learned what's up and I hope you learned uh, a little something about uh, business yourself. All right, now it's time to enjoy some of this good Cali Kush out of my little oven here and enjoy. That's just the name of the game. We have a bigger business here we, and that uh, comes with its advantages because we have market dominance to some degree. And there's plenty, but there's so many business opportunities all over the place that we gotta master it. If you get a big team of really elite people, you're gonna, do, you're gonna fare much better. But it's just a lot harder to do. You know, Ben Baller didn't have a mezzanine in IF and Co. He didn't have all that upstairs shit. He didn't do all that shit. And that's a, too much of a headache. I gotta refine my business as is. I gotta make sure the staff in this corner is good. The staff over there, I gotta build people careers, 40, people I got to make sure they have a long-term future and career and that's all I can do now you can only if you could get people that can help them themselves and organize them you're gonna have a fantastic time but you know I'm saying this is New York City in the year 2022 people got their heads up their ass they don't want to work they want to do Kylie they want to do this they want to do that you know what I'm saying they want to you know get their live a fucking ridiculous nonsense fucking lifestyle and um, to employ them and to train them to think like I think is impossible. I also did the no jumper interview. The trap is very simple. Do fair business, f me over and deal with the consequences. Right. I'm not gonna sit here and guard my shit, bro. I'm not guarding my shit. Initially, why, why would they say that about you? Why would they say that? Because I was a punching bag, bro. I was somebody, I was struggling, dude. I went into debt in the business. Again, because I pay all my bills, I worried about everybody else before I worried about myself. You could come and f with it if you want. I'm going to do something about it, and I'm going to handle it. I'm going to get my marketing out of it. Right. And I'm not going to do it like I did with 6 9 when I was a little softer or so on and so forth. I don't give a f about Scott Disick or 6 9 or any other celebrity cocksucker for that matter. Right. I want to build a business, make money, and get to the American dream in this country. And I love the no jumper, and we should be doing our own f 
and podcasts and our own shit, but we're getting there little by little. But that was another amazing experience. I got to do the no jumper. I got to tell the story. When I'm on there, you know what I'm saying? People behave, you know, somebody in the, in the skater world might take, you know, things enter the brain, they become a skater. In the hip hop world, you should become this and that. I'm not, I'm not any of those things. I'm taking as much information as I can and I'm putting it inside my mind. And that's how I develop myself as a human being and as a personality. I'm not neither this guy, I'm not that guy, but people want to look at me and they want to see somebody. Like, you know, I got a biker crew, you know what I'm saying, that I was hanging out with. Uh, my boy Jimmy Bags and whatever it is. And the first time I showed up over there, they were a little racist. They looked at me and it's like, oh, that's them. You know what I'm saying? You can, you, I can't be back there, but I'm not them, whoever they are. I'm me. You know what I'm saying? You don't judge me by the color of my skin or the length of my nose or whatever the f you're looking at. You know what I'm saying? There's a human being here that's thinking very carefully about every fucking thing around himself. That's me. Do 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 do